That was a bit of a wobbly voice. Hello. <coughs> okay. Um, let me just do this bit. There we go. That's that bit. And the chest. And... This bit. And that bit. Okay. Right. Um, let me just have a swig of water. He's a bit thirsty. Right, let me just make sure that I am in frame. Oh, I thought I'd sorted something out, but I don't know if I have. Anyway, we'll see. Because, <coughs> you know, yesterday, in yesterday's video, if you were watching it, it was going all pixelated and funny and what have you. And I think, I think it might have been fighting the stripes that's on this background here. So, let me just bring in this sheet a minute because I just want to try it out. Hi there, Margaret. See, it's not doing it so much, is it? If I move it about a lot, because obviously it's trying to focus, but that is a lot better. So, I think it was conflicting with the stripes in the background. So, fingers crossed that that's that sorted good day good day <laughs> what time is it with you right now margaret just out of curiosity hi there pat i can't stay so i'll watch the replay niece is taking me to see avatar 2 <gasps> oh i'm jealous Oh, I'm so jealous because I want to see that. Anyway, that's going to have to wait. That's going to have to go on the back burner for a while. But I hope you have a lovely time. Hi there, Rhonda. So excited to be able to join today. Watch part one this morning. Well, that's you up to date then, Rhonda. So that's good. Okay. I am going to make a start. A start to start. So this was the um, cover that we made in yesterday's video. Okay, and we've got the pleated pieces on the inside. My fabric also dried out beautifully. So I'll bring that across to show you because we're going to need that. So that's my um, fabric. So it ended up being quite lovely and dark in the end. And I've got um, a scrap piece of the envelope cardboard because we're going to need that so what i'm going to do first of all i'm not going to use my scissors no i'm going to use my paper trimmer okay i'm just going to get straight on oh thank you pat that's really kind of you every little helps because it goes to buying things like um my paper trimmer blades and it also goes to buying the likes of my glues and stuff, my, my Tombow glues and what have you. You're not late at all, Sarah, when you started. Um, that's why you've only just got the notification, you see, because I've only just started. <laughs> um, so, yeah, every little bit of, like, if you, even if you buy me a cup of coffee or something, you know, every little helps. So thank you very much for that, Pat. That's very kind of you. What I'm going to do with this crappy bit of card is I'm going to cut out a couple of thin strips. So I want them. I'm trying to think how wide I did them on this one. Hang on, let me just have a quick butcher's hook. Ooh, about a quarter of an inch. Okay. So let's do it that way around. Maybe. Now let's trim that edge off. Give myself a straight edge. 
sort of ish okay so I'm going to go to the quarter inch mark over here and we'll see if that's right the only one thing with this mat I might have to put some tape on it to hold it down right quarter inch was too big it was thinner than that so let's do an eighth of an inch eighth of an inch eighth of an inch there we go that's better I'm going to cut a couple of those out eighth of an inch eighth of an inch okay you over there on the pile of rubbish put you down there and then I'm going to glue the two together so, where is my palm bow there you go Okay, because this, although it's relatively thick card, I want it thicker. So I'm just going to glue these two pieces together. Ah! Get out of my glue. It's not easy when you're dealing with such thin pieces of card. There we go. And I am going to just tape down this mat because, as I say, it's just slipping a bit too much. So let me just put some bits of micropore on it to hold it in place. Bear with me whilst I have technical issues. I've got a bit of tape on there. And we'll put a bit on that side. I'll be with you in a sec. The perfectionists out there will be going, oh, she should have had that done before she even came online. No, I'm human. Okay, so we've got a slightly thicker piece of board now, which is what I want, because I'm going to add this onto this spine area, and I'm going to put a piece up here and a piece down the bottom. And this is what it looks like. If you can see the pieces of board there and there. Okay. Okay. So it just gives it that slightly authentic feel to it again, of it being an old book. So I'm just going to chop that off there. And I'm going to do the same down the bottom. And I'm just cutting it to the size of the grey board. <sighs> Did anyone actually go off and go and make a start on their journal or... As nobody picked it up to start it yet. Just wonder after I'd done the. Come on, glue. I just wondered after I'd done the video whether anyone was going to actually sit and do it. Okay, and I'm going to come down. Let me just bring that a bit nearer to myself. Probably about three quarters of an inch to an inch ish I'm just going to glue that on there I want to trim that end a bit that's a bit raggedy there we go and I'm going to do the same at the bottom Hello, is anybody there? Am I talking to myself? I think I might be talking to myself. And again, I'm going to put that one up from the bottom 
right, three quarters of an inch to an inch ish. Okay, it's gonna have a slurp of water. I'm extremely thirsty today. Hi there, Mrs. Sturdy. I don't think the other thing that this camera doesn't like is it doesn't like fast movement. So I'm gonna have to go, whoa, totally cool, dude. I'm gonna have to go really slow. <laughs> oh, oh, Sarah, I'd rather you than me washing pots. Okay, so as I said yesterday, this piece of fabric is bigger than you actually need. So I'm going to leave the raw edges. I want it to cover over this brown piece over here. So if I go halfway up or thereabouts, I can see that it needs to sit about there. And it needs to come across there and it needs to go across to about here. So I'm going to trim it off just slightly beyond the brown edge of this point here. Okay, so I'm just going to snip it. Right, so I've snipped it just a little bit. Then I'm going to put and rip. Oh, it's a satisfying sound, is that? Okay, and I'm going to do the same for the length. So it needs to be about there, and it needs to be about there, and I'm going to cut it about there. So again, I've just snipped a little bit, and then I'm going to rip it. Okay. Now I've got to be careful that I don't push down on this too hard because I don't want to flatten these here. And I'm going to use my fabri tac glue. So I've had it sitting upside down for a little bit, so hopefully the glue should be in the nozzle by now, rather than waiting for sort of five, ten minutes for, t for it to, to get down there. And I'm just going to put it on that brown edge there. And I'm going to stick the fabric in place just purely on that brown bit for now okay stick that down on there Now don't don't squish me woohoos. <laughs> Anyone watching this one, not having watched the last one, will go, what the blooming eggs a woohoo? <laughs> okay, and I'm just gonna pull that back a bit. And now I'm gonna put glue everywhere else, but making sure that I get plenty of glue. Oh please don't run out now right along the edges of where those little strips of card are so it covers it right the way around come on glue come on play because this glue dries quite quick so you do have to be fairly quick with it but if it's not coming down into the nozzle fast enough it gets quite frustrating Okay, across the top, and it's even harder to do it with your left hand when you're right handed. I need to make sure that I have totally covered this card. Oh, God, it hurts your hands. Blimey, if you've got arthritic hands, I tell you what, this would be difficult to use. <sighs> okay, and plenty of glue on that bottom bit. Go around them again. 
just in case it's dried off a little. Okay. Let's get that down. All right. I'm just going to run my fingernail. Well, I should use that really, shouldn't I? Let's use that. I'm just going to run it along the edge of the card. Making sure not to squash me woohoos, eh? Just to make that stand prominent. And again, not pushing down too hard. to make sure that this has stuck down well now I've just I've moved it down a tad too far look so I've just missed this top edge here so I'm going to put some walnut stain on that you won't notice okay lift this last bit up a droopy bit of glue Let's just wipe that off I've had a busy day today so far myself and granddaughter have been packing up the pop-up shop kits for next week I'm really looking forward to everyone seeing it it's a really good one new digi kit with it as well hi there Cindy welcome aboard Uh, do you know what I think it is? Why well, I think it's going a bit slow. I think my nozzle's a bit... There we go. I think my nozzle was a bit blocked up. Let's try that. See, that works better when your nozzle's not clogged up. Okay. I'll stick that bit down. Now, one thing I will say about this fabric because of the of what I've used and stuff, I noticed that when I was doing this, it actually marks the fabric a little, whether you do it with your fingernail or whether you do it with um, your bone folder, it just marks it a little. But you know, hey ho. I'm just going to put it down to, well, that's part of the joy of creating something. So you just have to go along with the nuances of it all. Just keep going back and reinforcing. to reinforce that and also reinforce the one on this side okay so I'm having this one as my front so I should be able to Ta -da! Okay, bring it down a little so that you can see. Hi there, Suzanne. So as I say, with this top bit up here, I'm just going to put a bit of um, walnut stain on it. I might need to spend a bit of, yeah, you know, instead of rushing it on the camera like this, I'm, I'm going to be better off doing it once I'm off camera and that kind of... I can mess with it more um, but just spend a little bit of time 
just making sure that you've got it how you want it and as i say it comes out quite well you wouldn't think that just putting you know two thin bits of card together underneath the fabric that it creates this beautiful you know sort of almost like vintage binding antique binding on it so i've just done the two but there's no reason why you couldn't go and do more if you wanted okay so that's the outside sort of prepared now i'm going to go to the inside so i've got all these little piles of things prepared off to the side so just bear with me while i get the next batch out god i am so thirsty today what's going on oh. okay next so when you've got the digital kit oh this is funny i put glue on it earlier thinking i was sticking it to something else so i've got glue all on the back <laughs> but the second page in the kit um is this green now when i tried to show this yesterday it didn't show it very well the camera went no i'm going to go all pixelated yeah it's doing it a little bit let me hold it really still see if it'll focus mm, a little bit not a lot okay so i cut them out as they were out of the the kit they are slightly bigger than necessary all right now remember that first score line that we did they're going to get butt up to that first score line and it's going to butt up along this top edge and it will probably need trimming down a little now you could measure if you wanted to but i want to make sure that it's a nice tight fit so you've got one for the front and you've got one for the back but before you attach these you need to think about your closure because some things might need to be done before you actually attach excuse me those two pieces of paper on there which is what i need to do with mine now if all you're doing is going to punch some holes in there and maybe put some metal eyelets in and then some of your seam binding or whatever to then do it up then you would need to do that once this paper is in place if you're using the likes of a hitch post or these were provided in the kit and this follows along with some of what's in the um, February's mystery box because I called it the box of curiosities and I will be going through the contents of that in various videos um, so you will see some of those things crop up. I've already used one of them in one of the uh, videos that I've done. These aren't in the mystery box, but they are a curiosity, as in they're not normally sort of associated with junk journal making. These are the hooks that you hang onto the back of a picture frame and then you then use that hook to then hook it onto your nail or you know picture hook whatever you then use that to hook that onto the wall okay but i'm going to use it as a closure now i'm going to go for about halfway down all right and i'm going to use my pokey tool and i'm going to come in what's that about half to three quarters of an inch I'm just going to poke a hole, minding my fingers on the back. I've got my fingers splayed open on the back so that I'm not going to, hopefully, she says, poke. Yeah, there you go, looks, so I've missed it. Woo! And I'm going to put that clip 
on there. And I've got a couple of brads somewhere. There we go. And I'm going to attach that with a brad. So, brad's going to go through there. That's going to go through the hole. And then I can splay the brad open on the back. Push down with the flat of my scissors to just try and get it nice and flat. Okay, and that's that one now in place. So I'm going to line it up. So what we're about there, aren't we? Yeah, ish. You could measure, but you know what I'm like with measuring. I don't do it very often. Make myself a hole. Get me Brad. Get me clip. And it's just something that's slightly different to know um, and stops the ribbon or seam binding from rubbing against the cardboard and making maybe a bigger hole if you've not used a metal eyelet. Okay. Just push down from the front with the flat of my scissors to just flatten that out a little. Okay, and I've now got my two clips in place. So I'll show you. On this one. So you can see I've got a length of, of ribbon folded in half. And I've looped it through that little hook. And if you turn it over. I've got the same thing on the back. So I've now got my ribbons to be able to do up my journal cover. But I'm not going to add my ribbons right now. I'm going to wait for a bit before I add those. But now that they're in place, I can now add these papers onto here. Now whilst I said before that this overhangs a little bit, I now can't let that overhang because this metal piece is now in the way for me to be able to trim it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line it up with this outer edge and I'm going to let it go over that first crease rather than trimming it down because I can't be bothered. <laughs> I'm tired now. I've had a long day. <laughs> right. Yeah, I'm going to have to trim it a little bit, I think. Now, you could ink it up if you wanted to. Um, again, I'm too tired to do that because I've already been inking up a load already. Look, my hands are covered in ink. They were earlier. Okay. Get some glue on here. Helps if you open the nozzle cap. Okay, so around all four sides. And then through the middle. And I'm using my collal glue for this bit. You're not very chatty tonight, you lot. 
You're very quiet. You're going to tell me in a minute you're all busy concentrating on what it is that I'm doing. Hair there, go away hair. Do a little bit of trimming off. I know, I just said that. leave that to dry a bit and now I'll do this other one well I don't think it's fun watching me gluing papers <coughs> Cindy but um, whatever floats you bought <laughs> up with ridges on this one because of me having stupidly put the glue on it earlier when I shouldn't have done because I'm a numpty hey hi wouldn't be good if we were all perfect would it that's gonna go up there that's gonna go across there That's going to stick on there. Oh, Rhonda's consecrating. And Sturdy is my echo, echo, echo. I've put them away and I need them. Ah, dear. Finish this down a little. And I'll turn it to the front. I see how much trimming I need to do. Now the reason why I didn't ink that paper up is I'm going to ink all the way around the book anyway, on the outside and on the inside. So I figured, what's the point of inking up twice? My scissors are too big. So that's the inside now decorated. Now I could, if I wanted to, this needs to dry for them to sit down. I could, if I wanted to, add some strips on here and here, and then even in between each one of these where it's flat. Okay, so I could do that. I'm not going to, but I could do if I wanted to. I might even put some... Um, Oh, look, it's really melt on me now. I'll varnish this glue. Um, my magic tape, that's the word I was looking for. I could put some magic tape on there to hold it down because it's gone beyond the crease. Um, 
but I can mess about with that. I could put some washi tape down on there as well. But I'm going to leave it at that for now because those are the kinds of things that I can fiddle with off screen. You know, um, you don't need to watch me fiddling about with that. And then I would go around and I would ink all the inside and make sure I catch all these ed um, flanges too. All the way around, all the way around, all the way around. And then turn it over and, and ink it up on the outside as well. Okay. So that's that bit done for a minute. Now then. On my spine, um, I included one of these die cuts in the kit that are supplied which I sent out in a gold metallic because I was thinking to my little self could we could use um some alcohol inks which was quite funny that Mr Tim was talking about alcohol inks last night I should have watched it but I was too tired afterwards um because I used some alcohol inks to try and ink this up so that I could then sit it on here but for some reason it was not really adhering to the um the metallic on this paper but by the time I'd finished faffing with it I happened to turn it over and all the back side had picked up the ink as well because obviously it was my, my plate was swimming with it and it turned out this really lovely colour and I used, let me just see if I can find it. Caramel was one of them. Oh, hang on, I've got to stand up. Oh. Caramel and what was the other one? Um, could have been that. Yeah, I think it was. I used caramel and ginger. I can't find my caramel one at the minute. Oh, God, oh, God, it's leaking. Oh, no, don't be getting alcoholic everywhere, Carol. That's the last thing I need. <sighs> Look at that. Look all over my blooming fingers. <sighs> oh, you little monkey. Anyway, you're welcome, Cindy. Have a lovely time. Hope to see you again soon. Can't believe that. Oh, poor fingers. So all I did was um, I, I put this on something safe like a plate. <coughs> and I just kept dripping the colours on top of it, leaving it to dry adding another colour on top so as I say I used the ginger and the caramel and just kept leaving it and like it coloured it a little but because it was on this paper plate the, the ink was seeping underneath and it, it um, stained the back of it beautifully um, and it turned out the right colour right I'll put new somewhere safe put you over there for now oh hang on got my alcohol spray here let's get some of that on my fingers <gasps> do you know that always used to happen at school didn't it fountain pen ink you could guarantee whenever you used a fountain pen the ink had come splurging out <sighs> see if i can get a little bit of it off Oh, the joys. The joys of live videos. See, it's quite sticky. <laughs> so I want to get it off, really. God, it's all over my thumb. So anyway, that was what I did with that um, book plate. I just messed about with it. Now... 
you can use any of your sprays on the back side of it because it is just white card on the back side and see what you end up with and if you've got alcohol inks look at me thumb if you've got alcohol inks then you know have a go with those it might need there was something that tim talked about that you need to put down first and then put your inks on top but i wasn't really paying attention at that time of night i watched a little bit of it and i was like need to sleep so you might know better than i but anyway that was what was in the kit and that's what i did um sorry i'm not demonstrating it for you now but as you can see i can end up getting in a right old mess so you can forget if i'm going to do that live on on video that was bad enough as it was right let's get on to the next bit clean my fingers off a bit with the glue i'm being more of a mess tonight than i ever am <laughs> not having a good night am i right next paper bags so as I said, you need six of these paper bags because obviously there's 12 months of the year and it's the width that's the important part, as I mentioned last night. So these bags are four and three quarter inches wide and they're way, way too tall, way too tall. As you can see from the size of my book, they're way too tall, so they need cutting down. So the bags need to be seven and seven eighths inches long or high, whichever you prefer. So we'll get that out. You all sit in the corner nicely out of the way. And make sure that you've got the open end of the bag going underneath and you've got the bottom end of the bag on the seven and seven eighths mark. Okay, and trim. Now, as I've mentioned again in last night's video, keep these to hand because you can use these uh, in future project projects because um, you can glue the bottom edge or put washi tape around or put a piece of paper around and you've got yourself a nifty little pocket there that you can add into your journal. So don't throw those away. The next thing you then need to do is you need to go through the patterned papers that are in the kit and cut them to size to sit on the front and on the back of the bag. All right. And the size that you need for that is just get these out. It says here's two I did earlier. So these measure seven and three quarter inches high. So they're fractionally shorter by four and a half inches wide so they're fractionally narrower so that when i stick them to the paper there's a tiny bit of border going around all right so we'll stick those in place and again i'm using my collal glue and i've already inked around all four sides of the paper Oh, come on, glue. Play nicely. <laughs> Let me just declog the glue. I don't think there's, you know, I've got myself so prepared <laughs> and I don't think anything's going to go right on the video. Keep your fingers crossed. There's always the chance it might still work. Okay. So around all four sides and through the middle. Now I'm laying this down, as you can see, by gluing the whole thing down. You could glue around just three of the sides and have a, another pocket. It depends what you want to use your journal for. Now this is the open end up here. That's the bottom of the bag. And I'm laying that bit down first so that I can make sure 
that it's lined up and I can see the border that I've got on the left and the right hand side and that's that, that in place and then I'm going to flip it over and attach this one we're just checking the direction on that then I thought I'd got it upside down because the other thing is as well is that once you've got this paper in place you can then do punch a thumb a thumb hole at the top if you try and punch a thumb hole straight through this paper it's really thin so at least with um with this paper on top it makes it thick enough for the punch to grab hold of the paper and give you a nice thumb hole at the top of the, the bag if that's what you want to do okay the other thing that you can do before you you stick these in place is if you want to stitch yourself a border all the way around then you would need to do that first before you glue them onto the bag once they're on the bag you can't really stitch them because you will glue the gusset closed and we need that to be open okay so make sure that if you do any stitching that you do it before you glue it to the bag and again in true blue peter style he's here's five bags that i did earlier so they're all done and i'm not putting thumb holes in mine so let me maybe swap that one Okay, so those are my paper bags done. So then it comes to attaching them. And this is why you don't need to do any stitching, Margaret. Yeah, I definitely need to put some something else on there because they're just going to keep flipping up these edges. So I'm hoping that you will be able to see this okay. So we open this gusset here. And that is going to sit on top of one of these okay so by the time you've put glue in there from the bottom you position it on right and then you slide it up until it won't go down any further okay so let's do one to show you and start with the one at the back so i'm going to use my collal again again not again again <laughs> okay so plenty of glue in there so we want to make sure that it's going to stick and then plenty of glue on this side as well because we need it to stick on both sides and then I display that open start at the bottom work our way up to the top and I had better just check something before I go any further yeah it's the right way up <laughs> And then we can just run our fingers down there to get that to stick to there okay just going to do the next one open this up so we're using that gusset to our advantage yeah glue the woohoo margaret <laughs> Glue it to the woohoo. <laughs> Is that going to be a new thing now? Glue it to the woohoo. <laughs> That's quite funny. And obviously it's something you need to work quite quickly at because you don't want these sticking together. This gusset. Okay, so start at the bottom. Make sure it's either side and slide it up. It won't go any further. 
and then run your finger. I've got glue oozing out everywhere now. <laughs> Put too much glue on. Just need to rub this glue off. Just bear with me a minute. Got it all over my trousers. Okay. Glue the woohoo. <laughs> I love that. I'm going to put that on group and they're going to be like, what? <laughs> Carol has glued the woohoo. Learn how to do this vital technique. Gluing a woohoo. Oh, I didn't want that one there, because that's two the same. So I'm going to go to the next one. Okay. Slider up. There. Sticker on. Oh, that one's going to do the same. So you're going to have to go on the next one. Yeah, there we go. That one's different. Ooh. So go down there, on there, around there, across there, down there, up there. Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt. So we're going wee up the woohoo. <laughs> we're getting a YouTube strike. <laughs> They'll be thinking that I'm being rude or something. Okay. And then if I push it down as well. Yeah, they lay flat too. Okay. Across there, up there, down there, round about there, across there, down there, all round about there. Start at the bottom. Slide the way up. And then last one. You get me into all sorts of trouble, you guys do. Okay, so I'm going to push that down and then with my bone folder, push on that to get it to stick. And I'm going to have a ton of glue oozing out everywhere now, but I'll clear that up afterwards. Flip it over, do this side, do that side, flip it over. Now, as I say, you could put a strip of paper in between each of these if it started to get a little bit messy with the glue, like mine has. So I might have to end up doing that. And again, that side. 
on that side. And there you go. So that's all your pages now in place. Okay. Now you have a couple of options from this point on with the pages that you've just made. So if we open this up, you can see that you've got this flap in here. So what you could do is you could get some um, strips of paper. Oh. <laughs> from any scraps that you've got left over from cutting out these papers or any other papers that you decide to use you could cut them down to size and you could stick them onto the inside of this gusset here the other thing that I did with mine was I added some lace so I just coffee dyed, I spritzed in fact I think I used old lace old paper um spray to just color my lace up a little and i just added a little bit of the lace on the inside of that gusset i didn't stick the two together i just stuck the lace to just this um edge here all right not to get it to glue to that edge up there okay so I will leave that choice up to you look at state of my fingers look how disgusting is that that's terrible in fact I've glued my nails to my fingers <laughs> okay moving on swiftly um, any questions whilst I just grab a drink of water? And I am going to and put some of this magic tape on here because that's going to drive me nuts. I might stick some paper on it later, but just for now. No questions, I don't think. There we go, and that will just hold that down for a bit. Okay, doesn't look like any questions. Next part, she throwing them about everywhere, was to make the pockets. So obviously I'm starting off with January. You stay down properly, please. Now I could just cut out that rectangle just exactly as it is and put some glue around three sides and then glue it in place. I'm sorry it's throwing the, the image out again. It's gone distorted again. It doesn't like... It doesn't like these images at all. Sorry about that. But what I'm going to do, because there's a lot of white on here, I'm going to use this white to my advantage. Let me move that cover out of the way as well. There we go. And even though it's all discombobulated, Hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing. So I'm going to cut down the centre of where that white bit is. Okay, so I've got a border down there. And I'm going to do the same kind of border on this side. Now I've done it a little bit wider to start with because I've just noticed that February is slightly wider. Okay, 
then I'm going to top, cut across the top edge of each of them. That's the top edge of February. Okay, so it looks like that. So I've got white border all the way around. And in fact, I'm just going to trim those two down just a little more. So that's one way of doing it. Now this second way, again, I'm just going to trim off this outer border. I think I did that a bit too much, but not to worry. I'm going to trim across the top edge. And I'm going to trim across the bottom edge of each one. So then I've only got the white border on each of the, the ends. This is really starting to annoy me, this pixelated picture. I'm going to have to see about swapping the phones over again. Excuse me. It's my mum. I'm just going to have to let it ring a minute. She'll probably ring me back in a second because if I don't answer, she always rings me back again. just turn my phone off there we go okay so we've got the two different sorts one with a white border at each end one with white borders around three sides so I'm going to fold up the bottom edge I know it's only tiny but it's enough to form the pocket that then allows you to have a little bit more um, depth to it to be able to add extra things into the pocket. And then we're going to fold each of the sides in. Okay. Then I'm going to taper that top corner and that one and then I'm going to taper out that corner out of there and taper that corner out of there. Hi there Jenny. Thanks for joining us. It's lovely to see you here. Which one did I do? That was June. Okay, so then I would put glue all along that flap, all along that flap, all along that flap. So that would be January. That would be February, March, April, May. June, June, it was June wasn't it I wanted, yeah June, okay, I'm going to ink up the edges, now again you can add lace underneath the bottom of this to have lace hanging down, you can decorate this up as much as you wish, as many of you know by now, if you're a regular viewer, I like to keep things fairly simple and then I can go back and go and add 
extra bits and pieces to it as I desire. But even then, I'm not I'm not a mad one for a massive amount of lace. But I can see what extra declaration stuff I want on there. So this one was June, and then that will sit at the bottom there. And because that end is now a fully gusseted pocket. It means that once that glue was dried, I'm not I'm not going to attempt it now, not with the failures that have happened this evening. I should be able to get more in that little pocket there. OK, now January, I only did the extra on each side. So if I fold that edge over and fold that edge over again, it's only very small, but it's enough and then taper each of those corners because it'll make it neater. All right, so that's the bottom edge there. So this one's going to have a flat bottom, whereas June has got a hinged bottom. That will go there for Janvier, Février, Mars, Avril. Now it does tell you on the bottom of these cards. Do you remember last night when I said, what, what birth sign was this charm? It tells me here, look, it was Aquarius. So now this has got the flat bottom, but it's it's got the extra on the sides so it gives me a little bit of extra space inside the pocket but not as much as june's got okay so june's got a lot more space in her pocket so i just went through then and added cut out all the pockets excuse me cut out all the pockets and added those next the next thing that i did and this is the one that's probably going to play havoc with the screen. So I do apologise in advance. So these were the journaling cards and I've cut them down into to groups of four. OK, and I've got a piece of dyed paper here, coffee dyed paper. I'm just going to trim off this excess white because I don't need that. And I glued I can't believe I'm getting into such a mess with my glues this evening I never have this problem I never end up with fingers looking like this one of those nights isn't it just going to be one of those nights Now I'm going to have a stiff word with all of you a lot later because you've misbehaved yourself this evening and shown me up. Do you ever talk to inanimate objects? I was having this conversation with the granddaughter earlier and she said she even just talks to herself sometimes. It's easier. There we go. So I'm just going to glue this whole sheet To this coffee dyed paper and if you go through and you stick all of them down all in one go then at least by the time you've done that and you come back to the first set of four it will be dry so I'm just going to stick that on there because I don't want a plain white background 
instead he's put, yes, I've actually apologised. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I've done that. <laughs> I've cursed a lot. So I'm going to cheat and do it whilst my glue's still a bit damp. But anyway, such is the way my night is going today. In fact, I only need to do January's, don't I? Just to show you what I did. And I would normally do this on the paper trimmer, but I don't want to glue up the paper trimmer because the glue's still wet. Now on each of these cards, down the one side, down on the left hand side, it has the numbers 1 to 11 and then the days of the week, which was obviously relating to the year 18 whatever when this was produced. So it doesn't make sense to sort of have it there now. But what I thought about using these cards for, and the whole reason for me doing this birthday book, was I thought so many times you hear of people's um, mobile phones going down, um, you know, they've got to the end of their life, and you've got everybody's birthday saved on your phone or saved on your tablet. Um, and I think it doesn't hurt to have a couple of good old-fashioned backups. Um, so that's why I started to make this, because I thought, well, I'm going to write everyone's birthday. So I thought what I could do is this is a quick glance card. So it means that I can write the person's name on there and just quickly write the number of the day of their birthday. So if it was the 18th, so I could put Gemma 18. And then I know that that's hers on the 18th. All right. So this was just a quick glance card. But it meant that this doesn't then make sense. Now, you could leave it if you wanted to so that it's got that old vintage look. But I managed to find in my washi tapes this lovely red. And my classmates always used to take the mickey out of me my, at my classes because I call this gingham. And they're like, it's not ging um. I'm like, okay. So that was the brummy part of me coming out. Apparently. Checkered or, you know, whatever. Could be floral. And then I just bent it round. And then chop off the excess top and bottom. There we go. I thought that was quite pretty. You can still see a bit of the writing underneath, but it doesn't matter. And then obviously January would go into January. Just get that in there to hold that bit down. And then obviously I made... Oh, egg. Oh, no, don't do that. <laughs> My laptop's throwing something up. I don't want it to. Go away. <sighs> Hang on. Just bear with me a minute. I tell you, it's going to be one of them nights. It's doing a check on itself is the computer. It just threw up the program. There we go. So then I made some of the tags. So obviously then I put the tags in as well. And it's February. Oh, the other thing I did as well, I went through all my little stickers and I just added a little pretty, a little pretty on the bottom of them. So obviously that and that would go into February's pocket and so on and so forth. So really then it's a case of you go through um, all the decorative bits that are in the digital kit Make them up as you so wish and add them as you want. Um, I'll show you the other one of mine in a moment. Uh, I'll give you a quick recap. Ooh, look. Oh, do you remember doing this at school, getting white PVA glue on your hands and then peeling it off? We're doing that later on tonight. Now, the last thing that I wanted to show you 
two things but I can't do this one until I've inked up around all the edges so this is the corner the book corners in fact I might come back and do another quick, quick little video so that's going to sit on there you see I might come back and do a quick little video to just show you these finishing little touches I think that that might be the best thing to do so I'll show you the the book corners and I'll show you the charms and I'll show you how I'm going to decorate up my front cover um, but at least now you know how I've added the fabric especially with these little uh, bars on them and how I've decorated up and added the pages and how I then added the pockets to the uh, to each of the pages okay so has anybody got any questions because I've been here for about an hour and 20 minutes so I think that's enough of listening to my voice isn't it and then I can do some finishing off bits at my own pace and go and clean my fingers so has anybody got any questions that they would like to ask and I'll give you a quick flip through of this clear my decks a little first Okay, doesn't seem to be any questions. So again, this is with those clips on the front, the picture hanging clips. Just to show you the spine again, so that was where I did the pieces of card. And that was the, the failed attempt, but ended up working out well, uh, book plate. Uh, that I use the alcohol inks on. Oh, look, I did add some decorative paper on these inside bits. So that was the January one, February. And then, as I say, on the inside pockets, there's some bits and pieces in there from out of the other kits as well and as you can see I've got the lace if I open that gusset out you can see I've got the glaze the glaze the lace glued to just this right hand side edge that picture hanger closure is brilliant thank you Margaret as I say, there's more to come from the box of curiosities because um, there's some stuff in there that I know that people are going to look at that mystery, but open that mystery box up and go, what the hell am I supposed to do with that? <laughs> but I am going to cover it. I'm, I am going to cover what's in there. But yeah, that's as far as I got with that one. I was quite disappointed that I couldn't do more. But anyway, you kind of got the gist. And I'm going to do the front cover slightly different on the other one. Um, this didn't work out quite as I wanted it to. But hey ho. So yeah, I was quite pleased with how that turned out. And you can see, look, how bulky the first and the second page are being. So by the time I filled in all the rest of the pages, this will actually sit quite nicely. It'll be quite nice and full. Um, whereas at the moment it's, you know, it's a triangle. It's a triangle book. Um, but there's some gorgeous images in the kits to you. So, so yes, so that's me. Done and dusted for tonight. Um, I'll come back at some point in the near future because of another video that I need to get up done and uploaded. 
um, and I've got the class that I need to do as well. I've got the workshop to do. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah, and as you can see, it sits nice and flat as well, which is the other nice thing that I liked about it, is that it does sit nice and flat. But I think that I'm definitely going to put um, either some washi tape or some strips of paper in each of those flat parts there just to neaten them up a bit because they've got a bit scruffy with what with brown nail varnish and glue so yeah i think to just add a little bit of paper in there would be quite nice and the same on that bit as well i think so yeah i think by the time it's done it's going to come out quite nice so thank you very much for joining me um it's lovely to see you all here and uh, i'll see you again really soon and watch out either on the facebook group or on the community section of my youtube channel um of when i'll i'll do another one of working on this but i've got a couple of i need to do the pop-up shop goodies i need to get that done yeah could put lace on but I think I've made a bit a bit too much of a mess on mine to to maybe get away with lace. Anyway, we'll see. We'll see. Okay, thanks for joining me and I'll see you all again really soon. If you've enjoyed the video, please give me um, a thumbs up. Um, and if you're watching this on replay and you have any questions or comments, nice comments hopefully, um, that you'll put them um in the comments section down below and i'll see you all again really soon ta for now bye